everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Catamount Fury. This is the Catamount Fury 1. Uh, this is a 12 gauge semi auto AK patterned shotgun. Pretty neat little deal here. Uh, following in the vein of like the, the Sagas or the Veppers, this, when it initially came out, was the extreme budget option to those. I remember I bought one. I bought a Fury 2. Uh, this is the Fury 1. Um, I bought the Fury 2 ooh, several years ago when they were just coming out. And uh, really the big difference is the stock. This has like a kind of a hunting style stock. The Fury 2 came with the Dragunov stock, which is just kind of skeletonized, but it gave you a grip inside. Um, whereas this one doesn't give you a pistol grip, you just got to pretty much grip it like a rifle. Um, I had some trouble with that one, and we'll talk about that here in a second, but uh, but I picked this one up on a trade, and uh, I got to say, it's, it's kind of nice to have one again. They are a little heavy, I will say that. I haven't actually weighed it, so apologies, but it is pretty weighty, and when you get it up on the shoulder, it just, it, it kind of does weigh you down after a little bit, um, but functional, Functionality wise, this thing can run anything. This thing can run literally anything. I've ran target load, you know, the bird shot, buck shot, and slugs with no problem. Now, this thing does have an adjustable gas system here, so you can adjust your gas system. Um, I haven't had to do that. Pretty much just the way it was set up uh, did the job. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, feature wise, um, does have kind of a pretty small sight radius. You have the front blade, and then here's your rear sight. It does have this nice rail here if you want to put a red dot or a scope on it if you'd like. I find the sights to be fine. They're, they're reasonably visible. I wouldn't complain about them all that much. Um, but yeah, the rail's nice if you want to do something with that. It also has a front rail here if you want to mount a, I don't know, a flashlight maybe, I guess, uh, if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, this particular rifle, uh, when I got it, the guy had polished the bolt and much of the interior, which is actually a great thing. It runs very smooth. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can't open it up here. Polishing it might not sound, well, I guess if it wants to open up for me, there we go. Polishing it might not sound like a huge deal to a lot of people, <clears throat> but the machining on, you know, this rifle is not great, I would say. I don't know if you'll be able to, I actually just shot this, I haven't cleaned it back up, but I don't know if you can see this, but the, the, the actual metal itself is, is kind of rough. It's kind of pity. And, um, you know, he, him doing that polishing really did kind of expose some of the, the inadequacies of the, you know, the Chinese manufacturing process. Because this is Chinese. I haven't mentioned that yet. This is a, a Chinese product imported by Century Arms. Let's see if I can get everything lined back up before I try and put this all back in. Get myself uh, all dirty in the process. But anyway, um, it's it's a pretty nice, nicely designed shotgun. But just, you know, just lacks some of the refinement of like Vepper and, uh, and Saga. But like I said, that adjustable gas system really does do a number... And, and it really does put a nice spin on this one. Before I close it up, see this? This little dust cover thing? I mentioned I had trouble with my Catamount Fury 2. So I took it out to the range. We were firing it, just target load. It was running perfect, and then all of a sudden, the bolt snapped back, locked in place, and I couldn't get it undone. I had to take it home and beat on it a little bit to actually get it to release. And it wound up... Uh, this dust cover had came off the assembly and had lodged in the back of the receiver. And it looked like 
it had just been held on by two pieces or two little drops of adhesive. That kind of irritated me uh, a bit, and I know that it would irritate a lot of people too. So just got to push this button back in here a little bit, get myself a little help so I don't have to sit here and uh, get my thumb caught on, on tape. There we go. But that piece, as you can see here, it just it lodged in the back. Um, I welded it back on and uh, didn't keep it too much longer after that, but that was something that really irritated me. I've ran, I don't know, maybe 100, 200 rounds through this at this point and haven't had any trouble. And interestingly enough, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it's actually right here on the bolt. This is number 24. <laughs> This is number 24 off the line, so this one actually would have been older than the one that I bought. Uh, and, and it seems to keep trucking, so quality control is the issue. Understand that uh, the quality and control on these probably isn't the best. You're going to have duds. But when you get one that works, and this is one that definitely works, you got to love it. <coughs> the trigger is pretty good. This one's um, really light. My other one was, was a little bit heavier, but this trigger is, is very light on this. Um, magazines. So if you were to buy this today, which actually is kind of a little bit of a chore because they're out of stock in a lot of places, they'd come with two of these five round magazines. You can get 10 round magazines, j g Sales still sells them I think, or they did at the time. And these, uh, they rock in. So you get your little latch there up, up in, and well, <laughs> this is something that's uh, kind of a learn. You didn't see that. I'm not editing it out either. That would probably be pretty spectacular. It does take a little bit of a learning curve to even put those in, but it does sort of uh, rock in like an AK mag. You just have to be pretty deliberate, and I'm sort of being intentionally awkward here so that you can see. But once it's in there, it seats, although you will see this little crease here. And I know somebody asked me the last time I shot, they said, hey, isn't this supposed to be flush? No, don't worry about it. The other difference about the Catamount Fury 2 as opposed to the 1, it does come with a little rudimentary, you know, plastic magwell. I found it to be more annoying. I kind of prefer the 1 to the 2 personally. Um, the bolt does... Yeah, I think it does generally, at least most of the time, will lock back on the last round. I think a few times maybe it hasn't, uh, for those of you who care about that. Um, although I don't have them uh, in the standard package for the Fury, it does come with three chokes, um, full, modified, and improved, I believe. Um, this one doesn't have a choke in it, but you know it does have the choke uh, capability, and it does come with it. It also comes with a little cleaning kit, too. So altogether, when I first bought this, it was $399, so $400. Nowadays, I think I just looked at like Gander Mountain, and they were like $599, so $600, and they were out of stock. So the prices have definitely rose quite a bit, because back, back then, I was really interested in semi-auto shotguns in an AK configuration, and this was so cheap and pretty well regarded even when it started. Adjustable gas system ran pretty well, had some you know some okay size mags but um you know it was cheap was the main thing it was so cheap it blew the other two away uh, nowadays the prices have creeped up so I think I think maybe for the money if you really want something like, like this I would probably buy a Vepper nowadays if it were me I know we got a lot of Sega folks out there and I, I can appreciate them I just prefer Vepper uh, Another great thing about catamounts, though, is that if you go online and search out Carolina Shooter Supply, and this is a free plug for them, you can get all sorts of neat little kits. Uh, I just got this one, and it's a uh, replacement trigger guard and uh, trigger group, springs, pistol grip, and, and it will accept uh, quite a few different ones after you make the modifications. I just went with a, a Magpul standard you know, MOE AK uh, grip 
Because what you can do is you can remove all this and actually move your trigger group forward. There is a hole cut in here already, so you need to make a few minor modifications and just check out, I think they even have a YouTube channel that you can check out for modifications. But effectively your trigger group will move up here, you have a pistol group here, or a pistol grip here, and then you can replace the stock. They have a few options for um, base plates. You can put a, coll a collapsible six position, a R style stock, as well as a few that they make. Um, they have a lot of modifications. There's also a plate that you can add in to your magwell so it'll accept uh, Sega magazines too. Uh, so yeah, Carolina Shooter Supply definitely has some cool stuff out there for this. So if you wanna, if you're, uh, I would say mechanically inclined or if you're an FFL or if you're a gunsmith or whatever, maybe that's something that you might wanna do because this gun is pretty easy to work on. Its price still isn't too bad but it desperately needs some of these upgrades because, you know, so I'm here with my, with my finger and my hand. I can't really manipulate the safety, which is just a standard AK safety. <clears throat> but once I get it up here, completely different story. I can manipulate it more like an AK and maybe the feel would be a little bit better. So uh, just a, a small, you know, kind of piece of advice to pass on if you have one of these or if maybe you're looking at getting one. Uh, Carolina Shooter Supply, um, their prices are pretty reasonable on this stuff too. I, I don't even remember what I paid for the kit. It wasn't very much, so, but you can get a lot of different things for this particular, uh, particular shotgun there. Just to trick it out if you want to, but in its original configuration it's still pretty good. Um, I will say one last thing here I guess before we sort of sign out. The kick, the recoil, um, I don't mind it. I'm not a great person to ask about recoil anymore because I've literally shot about everything. Um, but I know some people who have shot it, they say, oh, it's very fun, but it seems to kick more. They feel that kick a little bit more. And, uh, you know, I think the more that I think about it, probably, yeah, I've had some 870 pumps that have kicked less than this. And it's not like a shoulder jarring experience, but it certainly is noticeable, a little bit more noticeable. It's not going to bruise your shoulder, but you're going to notice it more. Um, but it is a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, wrapping off five to ten rounds, pow, 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 semi-auto style with this thing just slinging them downfield. It's very nice. And I will also say that it's reasonably accurate too. Probably at about 50 yards, I think our last target was, um, when I had slugs. I was able to put slugs... Eh, not center mass, I mean, <laughs> let's not joke about that, I'm not trying to tell you fish stories or anything, but, um, you know, we're relatively close to center, uh, the shot pattern's pretty good even without a choke, um, you know, so I think if you had a full choke or something in there, that that pattern would be pretty, pretty good. I think this is built reasonably well, I just think some of their quality control is not great. Altogether, if you want something to play around with, uh, this is not a bad option if you can find it for a good price. Um, I would certainly recommend it. It's been a lot of fun. I've had two of them. Like I said, the first one had its problems. This one uh, has really been more of a gem than anything else. So, yeah, as a Catamount Fury 1, I uh, just wanted to bring that to you. Uh, let you see another another piece of the collection or, you know, uh, as, I, as I get them through. But anyway, guys, I just want to thank you for watching another video. I appreciate all the new subscribers that we've been seeing, uh, everybody who hits the like button, everybody who comments. Uh, the comments are great. Obviously, the MRE videos bring in a lot of people. Firearm videos bring in some people. Uh, but uh, either way, just appreciate all that. Uh, just be sure to check out the rest of the channel, uh, some of the playlists that I have out there. Uh, take advantage of what I can try and pass on, that sort of little knowledge I might have. And uh, hopefully you continue watching. Uh, again, hit that like button if you liked it. Comment if you have anything to say and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate that. In the description, I do have a Patreon link. Um, it's just there. If you want to contribute to the channel, you can. If not, it's cool too. I'm not really in this for the money. I'm just in it to, uh, to have a little fun and, and hopefully bring you some stuff that uh, maybe you want to see. Uh, but anyway, y'all, I uh, appreciate you stopping down. And y'all have a great rest of your night. Bye-bye.